Due to the current climate of race in the United States of America, as we've talked about, there is just an overwhelming demand for racism-based stories, but there's just nowhere near enough supply. We see headlines that look absolutely ridiculous, and today's story is no exception to that rule. I saw it. It said kid suing for $10 million due to the fact that he was made to participate in in the game of nosedive and i immediately thought that this was going to be ridiculous and absurd when i looked into the story further i actually saw what we normally see with stories like this which are bad faith actors with questionable political affiliations that are on board with the alleged victim in this case it's actually the former lieutenant governor under Ralph Northam, who is representing this kid in his $10 million lawsuit against the Arlington School District. However, it is really important, and I need to emphasize this to all my fellow conservative content creators, all conservative media outlets, for you to actually read into the details of the complaint and what is actually being alleged. Because after I did that, it became apparent to me that there was actually more to this story than one would have thought, having seen hoax after hoax after hoax. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But before we get into that, this video is sponsored. It's National Gold Group. So let me toss it to the sponsor. Then we'll come back over here. And believe me, you're going to want to see this through to the end. The 2023 crisis is upon us. The Wall Street Journal is warning that the banking failures you're seeing are going to have serious negative impacts on the average American. Morgan Stanley is warning of a possible crash in the real estate market a la 2008 if not worse at the same time wells fargo believes that precious metals are in a super cycle and it's possible for gold to hit three thousand dollars an ounce all this is happening while the Fed has less and less tools in order to deal with it. What are they going to do? Raise interest rates again? We're seeing how that's causing all kinds of problems in all different sectors. What you need to do right now is begin to hedge against potential disaster. If you go to National Gold Group or call them at 866 826 2603 and mention my channel you'll be connected with their all-world american-based customer service and they will go over your options and tell you about potential fee waivers with qualifying transfers into a precious metal ira it is beholden on you to protect your own future so please call national gold group at 866-826-2603 and get started today there is always a risk with any investment nothing is guaranteed and prior performance does not necessarily produce predict future outcome. So new for you tonight, the parents of an Arlington Middle School student are demanding answers. They say their son, who is black, was forced to pick cotton as part of a classroom game. The family tells our Casey Nolan they want Arlington County Public Schools to pay up big time. A teacher here at Gunston Middle School said it was a game. Sydney Rousey Jr's family and attorney say the teacher should have known it was offensive when she told the only black student in the class to put Vaseline on his nose to pick up cotton balls. So the way that this is portrayed by conservative media, and you can understand the mistake, is you have a substitute teacher in a French class in a middle school. Because it's a substitute teacher, they're not really taking things all that seriously so instead they decide that they're gonna play a game with the students and when I was in school the game of choice was usually something like seven up or whatever doesn't really matter however in this case the game was something called nosedive and I've seen footage of this game a lot of fraternities play it a lot of kids in high school will play it at parties a player must transfer five cotton balls one at a time from one bowl to another using only their nose to do this, the contestant puts Vaseline on the tip of their nose as a transfer agent. Too much makes the release into the bowl difficult. Too little may cause the cotton ball to fall prematurely. And normally, right now, I would say this is completely harmless. If you have a situation where all the students are participating in this game and they ask a black student to participate along with the classmates, that is perfectly fine. I have no issue with it. I think it's A-OK -okay first class all the way. But the thing is... That's not what happened in this story, and this is why it's incredibly important, and I would say crucial, to read the complaint so you can understand what's going on. So you have this substitute French teacher, and she says, we're going to play this game nosedive. She sets it up with the Vaseline. You have to dip your nose in the Vaseline and then go grab the cotton ball and then drop the cotton ball in another thing, and then she asks for volunteers. There are no volunteers at all in this classroom. However, the students in this classroom 
all choose and nominate the only black student in the class to be the volunteer. He told him several times he didn't want to do it, but he just didn't have the nerve to tell the teacher no. Was he afraid he'd get in trouble? He was. He was afraid he was going to get in trouble. Now, the student in question is one Sidney Rousey, and as his mother explains, he told his other classmates that he did not want to be the one student to go up to the front of the classroom in order to do this. However, as a young man, an eighth grader, he did not feel like he could tell the teacher no, and he thought he might face consequences for it. That was February in his eighth grade French class. Sidney's family says when he spoke up about the incident, he was moved out of the class to finish finish it online and that they say led to the bullying and threats he has endured ever since. So he does it and he feels uncomfortable about it and students start picking on him. So then he goes to the administration. He tells them what's going on in his classroom and rather than address the bullying that's going on in the school, what ends up happening is that they assign him to classes remotely and then the bullying continues. And this incident actually happened February 8th and the bullying and harassment has continued up until this very moment. And this is where conservative media is getting this story wrong. Obviously, this idea that anything related to cotton and black people automatically being racist is ridiculous and absurd, but the issue in this case is not that. The issue in this case is actually bullying. This kid was bullied. He reported that bullying, and he ended up getting a in-school suspension for reporting the bullying. And after he was punished for reporting said bullying, guess what? It increased the level of bullying that he was facing to the point where he was facing threats to his life and all manner of nonsense that you shouldn't have to deal with in a school, much less have it facilitated by the school administration. And so what you have is a situation that is not a group of classmates all playing a game, and then one of those kids happens to be black, and then that kid is overly offended by it. What you have is a kid who was offended by something, he did it because his teacher told him to, and he didn't want to get in trouble. Then when he started getting bullied, based on his race and the fact that the classmates all thought it was a big joke he goes to administration and he gets punished he faces negative consequences and the bullying only continues because now he's a little baby about it according to the bullies has changed who he is he doesn't laugh he doesn't smile as much as he was before but enough is enough so i want to be 100 percent clear about what is going on in this scenario this is not the story of a kid that was overly sensitive because he was asked to participate in a game that everyone else was participating in this is a situation where a substitute teacher thought that she was doing something harmless and it would have been harmless but for the bullying of the other students based on his innate characteristics. Tuesday, former Virginia Lieutenant Governor and family attorney Justin Fairfax sent Arlington Public Schools a letter demanding $10 million. This is a classic case of bullying, which is what should be in the headlines of this lawsuit. Now, as for the $10 million demand, I'm going to be perfectly honest. It sounds like an awful lot of money. Every family deserves to have their kid be safe in school, emotionally, physically, and otherwise. APS declined to comment. And I don't like Justin Fairfax being there again the former lieutenant governor of virginia i don't think he's a great guy but this is a situation where the school created an environment facilitated bullying and then punished the student for reporting the bullying in my opinion this lawsuit maybe not to this exact amount but remember you ask high so that way you can negotiate is actually at fault. If what we see in this complaint is true, then the school facilitated bullying against this kid and then punished the kid who was the victim of the bullying, which but for the racism in the headlines, most people would actually be able to see. Sydney's parents say they know how they hope he responds to this. Hold your head up high and you walk in there with your shoulders broad and don't let nobody get under your skin. I have to tell him this every day to go to a place that is supposed to embrace, educate, and reassure him that he is great. Look, I know it's incredibly tempting due to the fact that I've covered multiple different stories of these kind of things just being a race-based cash grab, but in reality, we have a situation, according to the complaint, that actually seems pretty legitimate. It seems like the school facilitated the bullying and there should be some financial consequences for it. And by the way, another thing that you should take note of is that typically in a lot of these stories, what you see is a family that looks like they're desperate for cash. 
much, but let's be clear, this is a, one of the nicer school districts in the state of Virginia. This is what looks like a black middle class family. That is Sidney Rousey Sr. right there next to his son, along with his mother, filing this suit. They're the ones who retain this counsel. And again, it does not seem like these are the people that are just desperately trying to manufacture something. They didn't file the complaint until months later of bullying after the school decided to deal consequences to the victim of said bullying rather than the other students. So even though on the surface, superficially, it has all the indicators of one of these kind of race grifts, it appears as of right now, it's actually a legitimate anti-bullying case against the public schools and the facts appear here to support the story of Sidney Rousey Jr. And in that regard, because I don't want kids to be bullied in schools, I don't like the way that public schools end up treating the victims of bullying. They seem to consistently always make the problem worse. I wish them well, even if I don't want them to get a full $10 million for a couple of months of bullying, but some consequences and to a level where it will deter this kind of negative behavior are definitely warranted in my opinion. However, of course, we will follow this case through to the end in order to determine what comes out going forward. But hey, it's a good lesson for a lot of people to learn about when they see local news segments on whether or not they should just react based on how absurd it sounds or if they should actually pull up the complaint, what's actually alleged in court, so they can see what may actually be going on just beneath the surface. Now, that's all I really have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, show them by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on all my social medias, support me via the support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about something that looked like a hoax and turned out to not be, apparently. Till next time.